Conclusion A quick recap of all that we covered so far. We started off by defining a consignment. What is a consignment? Consignment is the sending of goods by one person, the consigner, to another person, the consignee, so that the consignee will sell goods on behalf of the consigner for a commission. The goods are called cons the goods are called consignment. There is a distinction between sale and consignment and we went on to identify the differences. The basic difference is that when goods are sent on consignment, there is no transfer of ownership of the goods. But in sale, once a sale transaction is effected, the buyer buys the goods, seller sells the goods, the ownership of the goods passes from the seller to the buyer. All subsequent expenses which are incurred by the buyer for safeguarding the asset, for maintaining the asset, are all the buyer's expenses. But in case of a consignment, goods are only sent by the consignee so that the consignee will sell the goods on behalf of the consigner. There is no sale transaction, ownership is not transferred. Therefore, any expenses which are borne by the consignee for maintaining or safeguarding the goods are actually expenses of the consigner because the goods continue to belong to the consigner. So the relationship is that of a principal and agent while in that case of a sale, it is a creditor and a debtor, buyer and a seller. <coughs> Then we went on to understand the procedure and certain related terms. The consignment sends the goods to a consignee along with a pro forma invoice giving the details, description and the cost of the goods sent. So some of the related terms were pro forma invoice being sent by the consigner to the consignee. The consignee receives goods and takes it to his warehouse or his shop in order to sell the goods. Once the sales is effected by the consignee, the consignee sends a statement called the account sales. So account sales is a statement sent by the consignee to the consigner containing details of the sales made, expenses which were incurred by him, the commission which is payable to him, the balance of stock which is held with him, details of any advance which has already been sent by the consignee to the consigner and the net amount which is due to the consigner. We also discussed the commission which was ordinary commission. Commission is normally paid to the consignee as a percentage of total sales. Ordinary commission is paid to the consignee. In addition to the ordinary commission, sometimes a del credere commission is paid so that any bad debt losses would be borne by the consignee and not the consigner. We also did another type of commission called the overriding commission which is paid by the consigner in order to market a new product or when goods are sold, when sales is effected by the consignee at a price much higher than that expected by the consigner. <coughs> Next, we went on to accounting entries. Accounting entries in the books of The consigner. The consignment account is prepared in the books of the consigner in order to ascertain the profit and loss or consignment. Next, we went on to the valuation of consignment inventories. How is closing stock valued? Consignment stock, which is in the possession of the consignee but belongs to the consigner. How is it valued? It is valued at the cost, cost of purchase along with all consignor's expenses and all expenses incurred by the consignee till such goods 
reach the place of storage of the consignee. Closing stock is credited to the consignment account. Then we discuss the accounting entries in the books of the consignee. Accounting entries in the books of the consignee. In the books of the consignee, no entry is passed when goods are received. But because ownership is not transferred, however, when the consignee incurs expenses, consignee expects them to be reimbursed by the consigner and therefore debits the consignor's account. Commission for the consignee is an income which is receivable from the consignor and therefore consignor account to commission is the entry passed by the consignee. Bad debt losses would be borne by the consignor. Ordinarily, it would be borne by the consignor, not the consignee. However, if the consignee gets del credit commission, then bad debt losses would be borne by the consignee. So, in that case, we such bad debt losses is set off against the commission and the net balance only transferred to profit and loss account. We then distinguished between normal and abnormal loss and also the accounting treatment for normal loss and abnormal loss. Abnormal loss is valued in a similar manner to that of the closing stock and it is credited to the consignment account. The effect of abnormal circumstances, the effect of abnormal loss is removed from the consignment account so that the consignment account reflects normal profits. Any insurance claim received is adjusted against the abnormal loss account and the net abnormal loss is taken to profit and loss account. As far as normal loss is concerned, there is no separate entry. However, when abnormal loss is valued or when closing stock is valued, all good units are priced slightly higher because the cost is spread over all good units. That means all units less loss, less normal loss, less normal loss. Then we discuss the concept of goods being invoiced above cost, which sometimes the consigner does, so that the consignee is not aware of the actual cost of the goods. Consignee does not know the margin of profits being made by the consigner. There were two additional entries in case goods were invoiced above cost. One was to remove the loading on the goods sent on consignment and another was with respect to creation of stock reserve. That is the loading in the closing stock. Entry for stock reserve was to debit consignment account and credit stock reserve. Entry for loading on goods sent on consignment is just the reverse of the entry for goods sent on consignment. Goods sent on consignment, consignment account debit to goods sent on consignment. For the loading, goods sent on consignment account debit to consignment. Security against consignment, we actually distinguish between the advance paid and security against consignment. So the consignee has the stock of goods of the consignor and very often, the consignee pays an advance to the consignor as a certain percentage of the cost price or the sale price of the stock held by him. It may either be an advance or in the form of security against consignment. If it is security against consignment, at any point in time, Whatever consignment stock is there with the consignee, a certain percentage of that would be kept as security deposit with the consignor. With that, we conclude this session. Thank you.